Hey there, fellow time traveler through the realms of television history. Do you remember the days when the world was in black and white, and our notion of outer space was painted in shades of mystery and wonder? If you do, then you probably tuned into the enigmatic 1963 TV series, The Outer Limits. But even if you didn't, I'm here to whisk you away on a journey through time and space that's sure to ignite your curiosity. For those who did witness the captivating tales of the Outer Limits, I invite you to travel back to those unforgettable moments. Those nights when the flickering screen drew you in with tales of the unknown, alien encounters, and the chilling thrill of the mysterious. Who were your favorite characters, and what spine-tingling stories left a lasting mark on your imagination? Now, if you've never delved into the depths of this classic series, don't fret. Together, we'll unravel its secrets and unearth the hidden gems of the outer limits in the pages to come. So, grab your popcorn, dim the lights, and let's explore the universe of facts and trivia about this iconic show that's etched in the annals of science fiction history. And now, my friends, prepare to embark on a journey through the bazaar, the eerie, and the uncharted regions of television's past with the outer limits. The Outer Limits, a science fiction anthology series that aired from 1963 to 1965, emerged during a golden age of TV sci-fi. It was created as a response to the success of The Twilight Zone and offered its own unique brand of thought-provoking and eerie tales. The show's origins can be traced back to the idea of pushing the boundaries of science and human existence, often exploring the consequences of playing with these limits. While lacking recurring characters, the series was known for its distinctive intro, complete with a foreboding voiceover and the iconic phrase, there is nothing wrong with your television set. Each episode was a self-contained story, delving into themes of alien encounters, time travel, and human nature. The Outer Limits left a lasting impact on popular culture, inspiring countless sci-fi enthusiasts, and later series with its blend of moral dilemmas, psychological tension, and the exploration of the unknown. It remains a classic of the genre, firmly etching its place in the annals of science fiction television history, all thanks to its distinctive style and captivating stories. In spring 1964, The Outer Limits creator Leslie Stevens found a $700 invoice on his desk at Daystar Productions. He believed it should be repaid to Daystar by ABC instead of sending the invoice to Outer Limits executive producer Dominic Frontier. Stevens called ABC's New York offices and spoke harshly with a low-level accountant. The accountant informed Stevens that Daystar was responsible for the invoice, not ABC. Stevens warned that if ABC didn't pay the invoice immediately, the next installment of the Outer Limits wouldn't happen. Relations between Stevens and ABC were already strained. ABC executives were not pleased with the series, as it didn't appeal to mainstream and older viewers. Frontier agreed that the invoice wasn't Daystar's responsibility, but he told Stevens that an apology to ABC management was needed. Stevens refused to apologize. As a result, ABC stopped accepting scripts from Stevens and the main writer, Joseph Stefano. Several crew members loyal to Stevens were fired before season two began. When ABC moved the series to series, opposing the popular Jackie Gleason, American Scene Magazine, Stefano quit. Frontier, a confidant of Stevens, was fired. New producer Ben Brady, under pressure from ABC, arranged for a new theme for season two, even though the season one theme had been well-liked. In summary, The Outer Limits creator Leslie Stevens clashed with ABC over a disputed invoice, leading to strained relations and changes in the series. This included new producers and a theme change for season two. The episode The Xanti Misfits from the 1963 TV series The Outer Limits is remembered for its unsettling portrayal of alien creatures. These extraterrestrial beings in the episode were considered too disturbing for television at the time and were banned in some areas. The graphic depiction of the Xanti aliens, which were insect-like and grotesque, stirred controversy among viewers. The creatures were designed to be unsettling, and their appearance, combined with the eerie storyline, left a lasting impact. Some viewers found the episode's content to be too intense, leading to bans in certain regions. The Xanti Misfits serves as an example of how the Outer Limits pushed boundaries in its exploration of science fiction and the unknown. It was not afraid to confront viewers with unsettling and thought-provoking scenarios, even if it meant facing criticism and bans in some areas. 
This bold approach was consistent with the overall theme of the series, which often delved into the anxieties and uncertainties of the Cold War era. The Outer Limits frequently addressed themes of paranoia, nuclear war, and the unknown dangers of science and technology, making it a thought-provoking and controversial show for its time. In summary, the Xanti Misfits episode of The Outer Limits remains a prime example of the series' willingness to challenge the norms of television and explore unsettling themes. It was banned in certain areas due to its disturbing content, reflecting the show's commitment to pushing boundaries and addressing the fears and uncertainties of its era. The Outer Limits was a 1963 TV series known for its thought-provoking science fiction stories. Five of its episodes were remade in later iterations of the show. The Outer Limits, I, Robot became The Outer Limits, I, Robot, The Outer Limits, a feasibility study was remade as The Outer Limits, feasibility study, and The Outer Limits, Nightmare found new life as The Outer Limits, Nightmare. Additionally, The Outer Limits, The Inheritors, Part I, and The Outer Limits, The Inheritors, Part II were remade as The Outer Limits, The Inheritors. It's important to note that The Outer Limits, The Human Factor, and The Outer Limits, The Human Factor have no connection beyond their titles. The show faced budget constraints that occasionally limited production values. Despite these challenges, the creative team showcased their ingenuity by delivering compelling stories that captivated audiences. Like many sci-fi series of its time, The Outer Limits grappled with censorship concerns due to its sometimes controversial and dark subject matter. Episodes featuring themes involving aliens, mutations, and the unknown often underwent scrutiny from censors. In summary, The Outer Limits of 1963 left a lasting legacy through remakes of select episodes, overcame budget constraints with creative storytelling, and faced challenges from censors due to its edgy content. It remains a significant chapter in the history of science fiction television. The Outer Limits, unveiling TV's bear and star-studded cast in the early days of The Outer Limits, a unique ritual marked the show's beginning. The control voice, a distinctive narration, initially kicked off the first three episodes. However, executives had a peculiar demand to witness the bear before anything else. Starting with the man with the power, each episode began with a glimpse of the bear, followed by the control voice, a commercial break, and another control voice prelude. This continued through the first season until the forms of things unknown. In the second season, episodes not only showcased the bear, but also included the control voice prelude, concluding with the probe. Among the stellar cast of The Outer Limits, a select few achieved the rare feat of appearing in both this series and its counterpart, The Outer Limits. Leonard Nimoy, David McCallum, Cliff Robertson, Barbara Rush, and Peter Breck left an indelible mark on both versions, showcasing their versatility across the sci-fi landscape. Adding a modern twist to this classic series, the song We Control the Sound by W&W and, w, and Headhunters pays homage to the iconic narration. Opening with There Is Nothing Wrong With Your Sound System, the duo ingeniously incorporates the series' famous introduction, captivating a new generation with a musical nod to The Outer Limits. As we revisit the depths of 1963 television, The Outer Limits stands as a testament to innovation and star power. From the enigmatic bear to the crossover cast, this series continues to resonate, transcending its era and finding new life in unexpected places. As we bid adieu to the enigmatic realm of the Outer Limits, let the echoes of its timeless tales resonate in the corridors of your imagination. As you navigate through the cosmic tapestry woven in 1963, consider the peculiar dance of science fiction and the human experience. How did the flickering light of your screen intertwine with the shadows of your thoughts during those moments of exploration? The Outer Limits wasn't just a series, it was a portal, a passage into uncharted dimensions of storytelling. Did you find solace in the eerie echoes of the control voice or shiver at the unforeseen twists that lurked in every episode? Perhaps, somewhere between the flickering black and white, you discovered reflections of your own fears, hopes, or curiosities. Now, let's embark on a journey beyond the screen. Reflect on the narratives that ignited sparks in your mind. Which episode became a clandestine companion during a stormy night? How did the extraterrestrial narratives blur the lines between the familiar 
and the unknown in your own cosmic consciousness. We invite you to share the galaxies of your memories and thoughts about the outer limits. Whether it's a whisper from a forgotten episode or the lingering resonance of a memorable character, your reflections add constellations to the legacy of this iconic series. Thank you for joining us on this odyssey through the realms of the extraordinary. Your thoughts illuminate the infinite possibilities sparked by the outer limits. Until our next venture into the unexplored, may your imagination continue to soar to galaxies far and near.